Hello good day everybody, bonjour tout le monde. A little bit different circumstances today, so we are at our day three of 30 days of yoga together. Um, as you have read in the email, uh, we have here a little bit of problems with electricity and internet and everything. Um, nothing major happened, but that's what it is. So good day, everybody. Welcome to day three of our 30 day yoga journey. So today we're gonna to start standing and I wanted to bring the thought of the day, which is don't lose the connection with your body to the glory of the pose. So sometimes we think that we have to be in a certain pose in a certain way. And then we get a little bit frustrated because we don't, we think we're not far enough or we feel very tense inside. So let's come back to our body, same as we did yesterday, coming back to our body and being in the present moment. So not just aiming towards, I want to be able to do this or going back. Yesterday I could do this, what happened, but just being in the present moment and allowing the body to be, allowing the mind to be at rest as a consequence. So let's start into standing pose, pressing the feet down into the floor. The legs are strong, taking a deep breath, lifting the shoulders and then rolling them back. The hands are relaxed. Sometimes we think we have to stretch out the hands, but for the moment, just let the arms hang alongside your body, lengthen your neck, push the cervical spine against your skull. And then take a deep breath in and feel how the breath moves into your body. So maybe you're catching up on breath because you wanted to be on time or you, you have been doing quite a lot of things. So just let the breath be for the moment. You can take a deep breath in, maybe exhale through the mouth, release. Observing where the breath is. If the observation from within is not possible, you can always place one hand on your belly and the other one on your chest and then feel where the breath moves. The lower the breath starts, the more relaxed we are. If we are more in a stressful position, most often the breath is in the chest. So shorter breath means more oxygen, more power, more energy, which is all fine if we need it. But we also triggered by the environment around us and with constant news and stresses and everything, very often the breath is, the breath is gonna stay in the chest. So let's be conscious about it. Maybe when you're lying down at night, just feeling, seeing if you can expand the breath, starting in the belly and then going all the way up to the chest and then going down again. So very relaxing breath when the exhale, is longer than the inhale, the breath is relaxed. So bring the hands to the side again, separate your feet wider than your hips and bring the arms to the side. So strong legs again, we're not collapsing into our core. We wanna be strong, but not stiff. And then turn the palms up and feel your shoulders dropping back and the shoulder blades dropping down. Keep the shoulders where they are and just bring the palms uh, to the floor. So facing the floor and then bring the arms down and see if you feel any difference in your shoulder, in your spine. And now inhale, reach the arms up, lengthen out, press your feet down and exhale, bring the arms back down. One more time, inhaling up and exhaling down. Bring the hands onto the hips and then slowly start to bend one knee and the other knee. You'll notice the upper body is staying in one line. So from the hips to the shoulders, so we are not moving side to side. We're just playing with the knees here. So bring a bit more weight to the left and then to the right, just warming up the legs. Just the knees are bending to the front, so don't bring the knees in. Little things to just listen to 
or capture what is important for you. And then coming back to center <clears throat> and then starting to make little circles with your hips. So keeping the feet very light so that your knees don't get stuck between the feet and the hips. So just moving here, you can push your bum back, push your pubic bone forward, your hips to the side and then changing direction. And then coming back to center. We're gonna bring the hands onto the lower back. So the heel of the hand is at the bony part of your hips, so the start. And the fingers are gently pointing down. Roll the shoulders back and then exhale and go gently back. Don't push your hips forward. You wanna keep your hips in on top of your heels. So inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale, go back. One more, so we're just warming up, so don't go too far. And then coming back, bring the arms to the side this time, reach your arms up, bring the arms next to the ears. And then from here, press your feet down. And this time we're going into banana pose. So this time you're gonna press your hips forward, but your tailbone is gonna go down. So don't keep the tailbone up, keep the tailbone down to protect your lower back and start to go back with your arms. Inhale, lengthen, reach your fingertips away from your head and then exhale. Inhale, never pain in the lower back, okay? So if this is too much, just back off a little bit. Again, what are, do we wanna show the pose or do we wanna feel our body? And then inhale, coming back to center and bringing the arms to the side. This time the feet are as wide as your hips. Toes are pointing forward, outside of the feet is parallel to each other. And we're gonna inhale, reach the arms up and then exhale, turn towards the right. So the knees are bending, knees stay together and the arms are reaching out to create a gentle twist in the upper body. Inhale, press into your feet, bring the arms back up and exhale to the left. And now follow your breath for <clears throat> Two more times each side. Really going with the breath here. And then coming back up and exhale. So this time bend your knees. The weight will probably move a little bit more towards the the heels, place your hands onto your thighs. So your fingers are very close to your knees. You can also come a little bit higher. So bend a little bit more. And then we're gonna roll the shoulders back, lift the tailbone and then look up like the cat and cow but standing so that we warm up the back of our legs as well. And then exhale, press the belly button back. You can bring your fingers towards the inside of your thighs. So you can really press, bring the elbows out, bring the chin to the chest, round your spine. And let's do this three more cycles of breath. So inhaling, exhaling. What do you feel in your body? Even if your movements are tiny, 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 it's okay. And then coming back to center, press into your feet and come all the way up and exhale. Separating the feet wider, not too wide. You have to feel that you're still strong and lift the heels up. And now bring the heels in so that your toes are pointing out. From here, just bend the knees slightly and make sure that the knees are pointing towards the center of your feet. Bring the hands onto the hips. See if you can go a little bit lower, keeping the shoulders above the hips. Then press into your feet and come all the way up. And come back down. We're gonna add the arms. So inhaling, reaching the arms up, lengthening your legs, lengthen your core, lengthen your upper body. Exhale, bring the arms into cactus. So cactus means elbows at the height of the shoulders. Press your elbows forward so that you feel an opening in the chest. 
and press your upper your forearms back so it's not the fingers that are going back it's the whole forearm inhale up and now follow your breath exhale don't collapse as you go down just feel maybe you come to an edge when we reach an edge that's where we have some space to explore very gently with lots of love for our body what happens if i go a little bit further and now is it your mind talking or is it your body talking very important and then from here coming back exhaling bring the feet back together bring the arms to the side turn the palms up and from here now reach your arms up interlace the hands turn the palms up press your feet down inhale exhale see if you can press your arms a little bit more back inhale exhale So really pressing the arms back, opening the armpits, long arms here. And then exhale, release the hands, bring the arms in the back, roll the shoulders back, lengthen the arms. So when your elbows are bent, you have a little bit more space to roll those elbows, to roll those shoulders back, and then you can lengthen the arms. From here, stand strong on your legs from your hip crease start to move forward again how far can you go don't go too far roll the shoulders back lengthen the arms inhale exhale are you compensating with the lower back keep the lower back strong the core strong that's going to support you but still pull your arms back and then from here start to bend your knees slowly bring the chest towards the thighs and maybe your arms are going to go up maybe not is that opening in the chest so don't have your arms roll forward or drop forward and then release your arms place your fingers down onto the floor and drop your head, drop your spine, release. So Uttanasana, forward fold. Maybe you can start to stretch out your legs just a little bit, but let the upper body totally relax. Maybe shake your head, yes and no. And now bend your knees again so that your fingertips can come on the floor and walk your hands to the front. Walk your feet to the back separate your fingers press into your hands bend your knees and start to lift your hips up and bring your head between your arms so preparation for downward dog lifting the hips up lifting the hips up rolling the shoulders out keeping the knees bent for now and now start to lengthen out your right leg equal weight into both your arms maybe the right heel is going to touch maybe not watch out for the lower back don't start to round the lower back if that's the case keep your leg bent a little bit so going for that big stretch in your right leg keep on pressing into your hands strong arms long spine and then let's change sides so bend the right knee lengthen the left And then bend both knees. And again, lift your hips up. Come onto your tippy toes. Lift as high as you can. And now lengthen both legs if accessible. Press into your hands. Inhale, exhale. Let's lift the right leg up and bring the right foot between the hands. You can stay off the mat or you can drop your left knee down. Left knee later explore um, what lifting the knee will bring. So left wrist is underneath the left shoulder. 
reach your right arm forward. Watch out that your right knee doesn't fall out. And then come and reach your arm up. Right arm goes up and as you come up, turn the palm out. So you wanna reach from the right fingertips all the way down to the left hand. Heart is reaching forward. You can look up or you can look to the side. And if you wanna go a little bit further, tuck your toes, press your left heel back and find that big stretch and strength. So that balance between the two and explore. Maybe bring like pushing the legs together and then pushing them apart. What different sensations does that give to you? And then slowly coming down, bring the knee down, both hands down, and coming back into your downward facing dog. <clears throat> this time we're gonna lift the right leg. Yes, same leg. Lift the right leg, bend the right knee and open up the hips. So you're Right foot is going to the left. If you look under your left armpit, you should see your right foot. Hips are stacking on top of each other and we try to keep the same weight, same strength into both the arms. Lift your right leg up and bring it down. <clears throat> this time lift your left leg and bring the left foot in between the hands. Drop your knee. Right wrist under the right shoulder. Reach your left arm forward, staying strong into that left knee. And then reaching up, turning the palm outside, length between the left fingertips and the right wrist, strong right arm. And then if you wanna go further, come onto your right toes, press back, open up. Keep on breathing and then slowly bring the left hand down and coming back into your downward facing dog. Lifting the left leg up, bending the left knee and opening up the left hip. So press into your hands. Maybe your right heel is coming closer to the floor. And then lift your left leg and bring the left foot down. Let's bring the knees down, untuck the toes and press your hips back. Keep your hands strongly pushing into the floor, creating again that lengthening in the spine. If, you're, if your bum doesn't touch your heels, that's okay. If your forehead doesn't touch the floor, that's okay. We're really going for that lengthening. And then walk your hands back just a little bit so that your bum and your heels getting closer. Now bring the right hand to the right. Keep your hips where they are, your chest, and walk your left hand towards your right hand. So on your fingertips, creating that stretch to the side. Inhale, exhale. And now we're gonna do, we're gonna stay on the same side. You're gonna walk both hands further to the right, further to the back. Lift your belly for a moment and see if you can bring your body in between your arms. So we're more going for a stretch in very close to where the hip and the waist are touching. So you're a little bit higher. It's a different twist, not so much in the upper part of your left side. And then going back, back to center. <clears throat> Same thing on the other side. So left hand to the side, belly is still glued to my thighs. I'm walking my right hand towards the left. I'm feeling the opening in the shoulder blades. Hopefully you feel the same. So stay on your fingertips so you can go a little bit further. You don't collapse. And then come on to fingertips, both hands. Lift your belly and walk your hands even further to the back to go and get that stretch from the hip, the waist. So walk your right hand a little bit further out. That's going to help explore. And then coming back to center. 
and release. So sitting onto your heels, if that's not comfortable, place a pillow between your calf muscles and your thighs so that you sit a little bit higher. Taking a breath in and a breath out. I'm gonna walk the hands forward and come into a plank. Strong arms, you can always drop your knees if that's too much. Tailbone moves towards the heels. And then from here, roll the eye of the elbow. So the inside of the elbow towards the front of your mat so that when you bend your elbows, the elbows are going back and not to the side. So we wanna keep the chest open as we go down. <clears throat> Let's move into Cobra. So place the hands underneath the shoulders, roll the shoulders back, lift yourself up, hardly any weight into the hands. And then exhale, come down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, come down. One more. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, come down. Tuck your toes. Gently move to your downward facing dog. <clears throat> Let's again lift the right leg up and bring the right foot in between your hands. Drop the left knee and come up. So your right knee is on top of your right heel. Your left knee is a little bit more to the back. As you come up, you can keep your hands on your thigh. Feel the opening in the left groin area. If you don't feel anything, place your hands down, move your left knee back. If you feel too much, move your left knee forward. And then bring the tailbone down so that your hips are tilting forward and creating a little bit more opening into the groin. Inhale, exhale down. And then open your arms to the side, open the fingers wide, roll the shoulders back and maybe a gentle back bend. If your balance is not there today, keep your hands on to your thighs. Protect your knee if you need to with a pillow or your mat folded double. Let your hips sink down, don't push down, just let them sink. And then exhale, bring the hands down, tuck your back to your back knee and come back into your plank. From here, knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Maybe you come a little bit higher into your cobra, but roll the shoulders back, elbows back. Exhale, down with facing down. This time lift your left leg up and bring the left foot in between the hands, right knee down. Find your stability. So bring your hands onto your thighs, adjust your back knee, feel the right groin area opening as you release. So don't press down, just let gravity do all the work here. And then again, if you wanna open up, you can bring your arms to the side. You can also interlace your hands in the back or you can just keep your hands up. You choose the variation that works for you. Inhale, exhale. And then with your next exhale, bring your hands back down, lift your back knee and come into your plank. <clears throat> From your plank, knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. Arrive in your downward facing dog. And then coming back into plank, we're going into side plank. So a couple of variations. So I'm going to show you my back. So if you know how to do full side plank, bring the big toes together and then roll over on the outside of the right foot. Left foot comes on top right shoulder above the right hip, and then reach your left arm up. Press your hips forward and up, strong supporting arm. If this is too much for you, coming back into your plank, 
drop your right knee in line with your right hand and then bring the right foot out. So almost 90 degrees. Left foot comes flat on the floor in line with the right hand, right knee, and then the right, left foot. And now as you come up, so first of all, keep your hand onto your hip, press your hips forward. Adjust maybe your hand if necessary, and then you can reach your left arm up. And if you want, lift your left leg. So we're working oblique muscles, part of your core. Very important to hold yourself tall. How does it feel? Not how does it look? And explore if I move my hips a little bit more forward. Maybe if I keep my foot down, can I reach? Can I connect with my hips a little bit more? You have to do the exploration. I cannot do that for you. And then coming back to the center. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. <clears throat> this time we're going into plank and side plank on the other side. So choose your variation. It doesn't have to be the same on both sides. So moving full plank maybe. And of course you can lift your leg here too. Keep your kneecaps lifting if you're in full side plank to protect your knees, the ligaments in your knees. And then slowly coming back to center, go to a flow if you want, or if you're ready for a child's pose, listen to your body and go there. Whenever you arrive in downward dog, don't go there quickly. Think about pressing the hands down, feeling the energy coming from your hands all the way to your hips. So long spine, neutral spine. And then as you exhale, the energy from your hips, pressing your heels down. Let's inhale, reach the right leg up. We're going into pigeon pose. So if you know you have bad knees, go onto your back. I'll guide you through it in a minute. Bring the right knee behind the right wrist. The right foot is as much as possible a 90 degree angle with your lower leg. And now walk your left leg back. So the further your left leg is, the deeper you will be sitting into the pose, the more you'll have access to the relaxation. So if you know, or if you feel already, you're gonna fall over <clears throat> to your right side, you might wanna put a pillow, something soft, don't put a block, because otherwise there's not gonna be any yielding, giving in. From here, walk your hands back a little bit, open your chest and then slowly start to walk your hands forward. You can make a pillow with your hands, or you can reach your arms forward. So if you have knee problems, you're gonna come onto your back. So we're gonna avoid then to have the weight of our body coming all the way onto our knee. So cross the right ankle over the left thigh, pretty close to the knee. And then grab your, left, your right foot with your left hand and your right knee with your right hand. Keep your left leg bent for the moment, on, foot on the floor. <clears throat> Wiggle a little bit in your hips so that you can bring the foot, the right foot and the right knee closer to your chest. If you want, you can lengthen out your left leg here to, re to feel the neutrality of your spine. If you wanna feel a little bit more sensation without rounding the lower back, Bend your left knee with the foot lifted and gently press onto your right ankle with your left thigh. Very gently. So we don't want to um, make the belly like a pull. We want to keep the belly long and we just want to go and get that flexibility into the hip. If you're still in pigeon pose, relax there, let it go. And then with your next inhale, slowly come up, tuck your back toes and come back into your downward facing dog. You might want to dance a little bit. 
And then let's go to the other side. So if you're on your back, you know what to do for the other side. Otherwise, if you're a pigeon, lift your left leg, bend your left knee, bring it behind your left wrist. Walk your right leg back. Just gently walk your hands towards your knees so that you can come up a little bit, open the front of your chest and then coming down and release. So and by all means, you can do one side pigeon, one side on your back. You always want to protect the knee if they're sensitive. You don't want to <clears throat> force anything into the knees. Their ligaments holding them together. So when there is pain, there might be some injury or inflammation and we don't want to force that. Be gentle. But don't be lazy. Ooh, the big word. Don't be lazy. So either way, if you're in pigeon pose, slowly bring yourself back into downward dog. And then come onto your knees and then gently turn around and come onto your back. Once you're on your back, bring the soles of the feet together, the outside of the feet on the floor and open your knees. You can place your hands on the inside of your thighs and gently start to push from side to side, rolling, just giving your lower back a little massage. And then bring the hands on the outside of your thighs to close your legs. Bring your feet a little bit closer, <clears throat> knees above the hips, open your arms in a T, lift your feet, and then bring the knees over towards the right. So relax here, let it go. If you need blankets or pillows underneath your knees because you can't get that far, that's fine. But don't force anything. Here it's really important that you relax your body so that you can, through gravity, reach a little bit further. And then slowly coming back up and going to the other side. Maybe your right shoulder touches down. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to make a choice whether you want your knees down or whether you want your shoulder down. So use props, use pillows and blankets or maybe a block so that you can feel at ease and you don't have to hold anywhere. And then slowly coming back to center, lengthening out the left leg, lengthening out the right leg, flexing your feet, pushing the toes outwards. So you're feeling an opening in your hips. And when you can't go any further, release your feet. So your hips will have opened together with your feet. Bring the arms into Shavasana arms, palms up. Maybe you need to press in your head to roll the shoulders under a little bit to feel a relaxed chest. And now slowly start to give in to the floor. So giving in to the floor means finding that balance where we trust that we can release our body and that there's gonna be kind of a bounce from the floor up to hold us. So it's a very subtle place to be. So be again, gentle, explore. We are using a lot of our senses when we do yoga. If you close your eyes, you're shutting out the external 
visions. Maybe look internally. If you turn your hearing inside to listen to your body, smells are going to be difficult to shut out. If they're around, just don't react to them. Don't name them, don't question, just stay very neutral towards them. And then the touch, the touch of the floor in Shavasana, where the floor and the body are touching. Try to make that sensation, that feeling so neutral as possible. So that yielding again, where one is giving up, giving up to the other and vice versa. So that there is a balance created almost as if you were floating. And I invite you to stay here and explore from within as long as you can. And whenever you're ready, you can come into a seated position, but please take your time. And move slowly reconnecting with the external world very slowly so that we can keep that internal connection all the while being connected to the outside world. If you made it seated, bring your hands in front of your heart, gently tuck your chin, Namaste.